The topic for tonight's class is the sorrows of a simp. All right, the sorrows of a simp. Can we get the uh the first screenshot of the uh definition of a simp, the urban dictionary definition? All right, the sorrows of a simp. All right, let's read that definition. Simp. It is when a man Male is overly submissive to a female and gains nothing from it. So a simp is when a man is overly submissive to a female and gains nothing from it. Go ahead. So overly submissive that other guys cringe and feel ashamed when seeing them. So did, when you a simp, you lose respect amongst fellow men, real men. You understand? They ashamed at the sight of you. Go ahead. This applies to males in relationships when they are so submissive that they say literally anything to be in favor with the female. Right. So they'll say anything, do anything to be in favor with the woman. All right. So this is one of the many definitions of a simp. Now let's go to the Bible. Let's go to First Ezra chapter 4 in verse 26. All right, does God address simps in the Bible? Yes, he does. All right, let's read that. The book of 1 Ezra, chapter 4 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. Yea, many there be that have ran, run out of their wits for women. So God says there has been many men, many, 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 many men, that have ran out of their wits for women. My Bible got two lines on the side of that. To expound on what it means, run out, of, run out of their wits for women. It says, have grown desperate. There have been many men that have grown desperate for women. Get, put that definition back on the screen. Grown desperate for women. All right? It says, it is when a male is overly submissive. This applies to males in relationships when they are so submissive that they say literally anything to be in favor with the female, all right? That means you run out of your wits. You grow desperate to please that woman. Go back to First Edges 4, read again from the top. Yay, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. There's been a lot of simps in the world from the beginning of time. Run out of their wits for women. Go ahead. And become servants for their sakes. And become what? Servants for their sakes. It's, it has been brothers, mighty men, forefathers that have literally become servants for the sake of women. We're going to get it. We're going to talk about that. All right. Go ahead. Many also have perished. Have Many erred, also have what? Have perished. Have perished. You know what, what it means to perish? It means to die. To lose your life. There has been many men that have perished. Read on. Have erred. Have erred. And sinned for women. For who? For women. For women. For women. For women. There has been many men that have perished, that have sinned for women. Now watch this. Continue to read. And now, do ye not believe me? So, Zerubel, like what you think I'm cap? You think I'm capping? Go ahead. Is not the king great in his power? So, Eli, I got an example for you. Is not the king great in his power? Go ahead. Do not all regions fear to touch him? So, all regions of the earth fear to touch this king. The king he's making reference to is the current king of Persia. They got dominion over the earth at this time. All regions fear to touch him. But watch this. Go ahead. Yet did I see him and Apome. The king's concubine. Uh oh, was Rubel like, but you know he was the, the the king bodyguard, so he get a little insight that everybody don't get to see. Y'all think y'all talking about this king that everybody fear, but I saw him and his concubine have a little interaction, right? Go ahead, come on. Yet did I see him and Apami, the king's concubine, uh -huh. the daughter of the admirable Bartakus. Sitting at the right hand of the king. Read. And taking the crown from the king's head. And doing what? Taking the crown from the king's head. So his concubine took his crown off his head. Wait a minute. 
This thing, this thing is spiritual. Why would she want to do that? What is it? What did what kick did she get out of that? Taking the crown off his head. Read on. And setting it upon her own head. And she did what? Setting it upon her own head. And set it upon her own head. Wow. Go ahead. She also struck the king with her left hand. And she smacked the king with her pimp hand. <laughs> Did, you can't make this up. This the king that everybody feared. They got dominion over the earth. But his concubine slapping his ass around, taking the crown off his head. You got to think, like I just mentioned, right? This is Rubabel. He the king's bodyguard. He gets a special insight to witness this. Everybody doesn't see the king in this light. They wouldn't think, they wouldn't imagine that this ruler would allow this to go on. But Zerubbabel had this insight. A lot of you brothers, strong in the Lord, the mighty camp teachers, bring it out and all of that, be at the leadership table, be on the streets going in. You get home, Look, on the street, you ain't letting a scoffer talk. You letting it rip. You casting down imaginations. You get to the crib, and your wife, hell, she could be overweight. She can have bad hygiene, all of that. But you will let her talk to you crazy. You know what I'm saying? But everybody don't see that. They just see the mighty man in the Lord. And let, let me just say this, too, because y'all know how I get down. All right? Y'all know I'm a story timer. You understand? It's, it's ain't nobody safe in my classes. So if you want to get offended, that's fine. Just know I don't give a damn. All right, it is what it is. But a sister, the brother can be mighty as hell, but he go home and his mediocre ass wife be able to talk to him any kind of way. She probably put his hands on her. How would you know? But he'll come around the brothers like he all, uh, yeah, brother, yeah, do this, do that. Giving orders, but he can't get his wife in order. You understand? This is reality. We're talking about the king of Persia right now. Somebody that had real rulership in the earth. His wife was smacking him around. His concubine was smacking him around, taking his crown off his head. There's some of you brothers at the house. Go ahead. And yet, for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. So after all that, after getting slapped with the left hand, crown took off his head. He didn't do nothing. He just sat there, <laughs> gaped and gazed, took a deep breath and just stared with an open mouth. <gasps> oh, my God. Go ahead. If she laughed upon him, uh -huh. he laughed also. Read. But if she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter mm. that she might become reconciled to him again. So that goes with a simp. A simp would do anything for his woman to get back in good graces with him. You understand? Or to get back in her good graces. I'm telling you, a lot of you, a lot of you brothers. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you all something, bro. The woman, her beauty and her stuff doesn't have any power. You understand? And what I mean by that is the only way it can have power is if you give her and it the power. You understand? You think about it like this, right? Go to uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. About the woman. This is why this is a commandment right here. Read that. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Go ahead. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So Paul said that women need to adorn themselves in modest apparel. Right? Meaning cover your body. Go ahead. With shamefacedness and sobriety. With shamefacedness and sobriety. Meaning you're not trying to be up in all the men's faces trying to get their attention so on and so forth. Right? Go ahead. Not with broided hair. Not with broided hair. Or gold. Uh-huh. Or pearls or costly array. So jewelry, accessories, all of that stuff to highlight your beauty, right? Paul gave a commandment for the sisters not to indulge in those things. 
Now we gotta we gotta ask ourselves, right? Why do women do that? Why do women uh now mind you, the scriptures say uh the beauty of a woman, a man loves nothing better, right? So why would why do sisters do that? Cause you brothers that's that's married, right? I'm sure y'all have been late to plenty of Sabbaths because your wife spent three, four hours getting ready, putting on makeup, putting on all these things that we just read. For Paul to say not to adore yourselves in this, right? But you sat up there and was late to the damn Sabbath because your wife was was doing that. Why why do women do that? We gotta we gotta examine that. Why do they do that? Is it what they'll tell you? Was I just it's just I just want to look good just to, for me, right? As if they walk around with a mirror all day to see themselves. They. Get, they spend three to four hours beautifying themselves up and putting on all this stuff for themselves. They're not walking around looking at themselves. They want to be looked at. You understand? That's why Paul is giving his command. Don't do that because I know the spirit behind that. You want to be looked at. And when you look at them, that is what gives them their power, their glory. You understand? Think about it. And look, when you think about like social media and stuff like that, right? Simps make this evil world go around. Think about it. Women do all manners of posts and selfies and pictures and stuff all day, every day, right? Why do they do that? To get the likes, the comments, the attention. To the point where women devote themselves to that because that's how much they love it and crave it. That attention, that is what they feed off of. Imagine if like these uh like these women as uh what's the word? Like an Instagram model, right? Imagine if an Instagram model, everybody unfollowed her. Nobody liked any of her pictures anymore, and nobody slid in her DMs anymore from this day forward. Probably the first day she was like, what the hell is going on? Is uh, Mark Zuckerberg hating on me? And You understand? But after a couple of days, she making these posts, and she'll probably even get more that. She'll probably start posting naked pictures or something. Like, surely this is going to make them come back. After a couple of days, and she's seeing that nobody's liking it, nobody's watching the stories, nobody's commenting, nobody's sliding the DMs, guess what she will probably do? She'll probably kill a damn self. You understand? More than likely. So it's showing that that stuff, what they do, beautifying themselves and all of that, and this down here that they have, that don't really got no power. You give it the power. You understand? You give it the power. Get James 1 real quick. James 1 and 13. This is like a little side. This, I didn't write this stuff down. All right? James 1 and 13. Come on. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 13. Go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Mm -hmm. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Read. Neither tempted he any man. Come on. Uh -huh. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So the 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 uh what's the word? The thing that's enticing you doesn't have any power. It's your own lust that gives it the power to cause you to fall. You understand? That's what God is telling us. The beauty of a woman don't mean nothing if you don't look. What is she, is she doing all that? She deck herself out. She put on the makeup. She look all good. And she come around and nobody looks at her. What power does she have? Zero. You give it power. You understand? Damn, I just can't stop looking. <laughs> looking ass. That's your own life. You understand? Now watch this. Go to Revelation 3 and 11. So we just read about an example of a simp. Right, the king of Persia, there's a ruble bell witnessed, I witnessed being a simp to the point where he let his concubine take his crown off his head. Let's see what Christ told us men. 
Read it. The book of Revelations, chapter 3 and verse 11. Come on. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, mm -hmm. that no man take thy crown. Don't let no man take your crown. That ain't just talking about men. You understand? Don't let a man or a woman take your damn crown. Now watch this. Was that it? That the whole verse? All right, now watch this. Go to Sirach chapter 9, verse 2. How could you let a man or a woman, t well, we're going to talk about the woman. How would you let a woman take your crown? Because the crown is going into rulership, reigning with Christ. How would you let a woman take that crown? Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 9 and verse 2. Go ahead. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. The Bible says, give not thy soul <laughs> to a woman. You got to imagine why is it using that terminology? Give not your soul, your soul to a woman. And these sisters desire your soul. That's what the Bible telling you, bro. God said, don't give your soul to a woman. Read it again. Give not thy soul unto a woman uh -huh. to set her feet upon thy substance. To do what? Set thy, her feet upon thy substance. That's why she wants your soul. She wants your crown. She wants your inheritance. She wants your power, your glory. You understand? God said, don't give your soul to a woman. But that's what a lot of brothers do. Read verse 6. Verse 6. Come on. Give not thy soul unto harlots. Give not thy soul unto harlots. We're going to talk about that in a second. Go ahead. That thou lose not thine inheritance. The key word in this is lose. That thou lose not thine inheritance. That thou lose not thine inheritance. What is it? What is the Bible telling you? A harlot will cause you to lose your spot in the kingdom. That's your inheritance. Your crown. A harlot can cause you to lose your crown. She will take your damn crown. You understand? Now watch this. Go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon the ch chapter 9 and verse 1. Come on. O God of my fathers and Lord of mercy, who has made all things with thy word uh -huh. and ordained man through thy wisdom, that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. So who is this scripture talking about, brothers? No. Well, who is it talking about? Adam. Thank you. Adam. So he ordained Adam through his wisdom that he should have dominion over the creatures which he made. If Adam had dominion over the creatures which he made, what did that make Adam in the earth? A God. Go to Sirach 49. Sirach 49 verse 16. Remember when we read about losing your inheritance when you give a soul, when you give your soul to a woman. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 49 and verse 16. Come on. Shem and Seth were in great honor among men. Come on. And so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. So Adam was above every living thing in the creation. Adam was a God in the earth. And not just the earth. I'm going to get that in a second. Go to Wisdom of Solomon 2. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 23. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 23. Uh -huh. For God created man to be immortal. He created Adam to be immortal. Go ahead. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. He made Adam to be an image of his own eternity. Adam was not created to die. You understand, his inheritance was to rule the world forever. Watch this, 2 Ezra 3, 2 Ezra chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. Book of 2 Ezra chapter 3 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. And gave us thy body unto Adam without soul, uh -huh. which was the workmanship of thine hands, and didst breathe into his him the breath of life. And did it breathe into him the breath of life. What is the breath of life, brothers? Who got a precept? Do we got a mic in the crowd? Okay. What is the breath of life right here? All right, soldier like. Come on. Shalom, Capo. It's uh, wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 25. Good job. Let's start at verse 24. 
Read that. The breath of life. Come Book on. of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 24. Uh -huh. For wisdom is more moving than an emotion. Mm -hmm. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of God. She is the what? Breath of the power of God. She is the breath of the power of God. Notice it call her a she, right? She is the breath of the power of God. Go ahead. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Right. So this is the breath of life that God breathed into Adam, right? Now watch this. Go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 and read verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 9. Go ahead. Therefore, I purpose to take her to me to live with me. So who is the her in this verse, brothers? Wisdom. Go ahead. Knowing that she would be a counselor of good things mm -hmm. and a comfort in cares and grief. Right. So notice it, it calls her her and he says, take her to live with me. Right. So this is what Adam had when the Lord breathed the breath of life into him. You understand? So, what was Adam's reverse two? Verse two. Let's I start love at verse one. Verse one. Wisdom reacheth from one end of to another mightily. Come on, Abram. Come on. And sweetly doth she order all things. So wisdom orders all things. Read. I loved her and sought her out uh -huh. from my from my youth. I desired to make her my spouse. Desired to do what? Make her my spouse. Uh huh. And I was a lover of her beauty. And I was a lover of her beauty. I desired to make her my spouse. Right? Hmm. So before Adam had fell asleep and the Lord took his rib and made Eve, what was his first love? Wisdom. Brothers, that's supposed to be us in this truth. Wisdom is our first love. Wisdom come first. A lot of y'all brothers don't understand that. You understand? Now watch this. Go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 3. 2nd Ezra chapter 3 verse 5. Book of 2nd Ezra chapter 3 and verse 5. Come on. And gave us thy body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, mm -hmm. and didst breathe into him the breath of life. Wisdom. Right? His first love. Go ahead. And he was made living before thee. Uh-huh. And thou leadest him into paradise. Into what? Into paradise. Into what? Into paradise. He led Adam into paradise. This is going into his inheritance. Go ahead. Which thy right hand had planted. Uh-huh. Before ever the earth came forth. This is how you know paradise is not talking about uh, the physical garden in the earth. The paradise that he led Adam into was created before the earth was ever made. You understand? Adam had access. He had dominion over the earth, but he had access to paradise. Hmm. Hmm. Read on. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. He gave Adam a commandment to love his way. What way? Wisdom. Right? That was supposed to be his first love. Go ahead. Which he transgressed. Which he what? Transgressed. And immediately thou appointest death in him. So, all right. Hmm. So, Adam, first love was wisdom. And God commanded him to love his way. But then he transgressed, right? And then he lost his inheritance of et eternal life. Watch this. Go to Sirach chapter 25, verse 24. How did he lose his inheritance? How did death ended up being appointed in him? Let's read that. The book of Sirach chapter 25 and verse 24. Come on. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Read. And through her we all die. And through her we all die. Sheesh. Through the woman, we all die. So it's that's why you gotta read precept upon precept. Because you just read second and you're like, damn, Adam, what did he do? How did he transgress God's ways? How did he go against his first love? What caused him to do that? Of the woman came the beginning of sin. What did Adam do? Have a simp moment. Let's get it. Genesis chapter 3. 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. All right. Read what you got. The book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Come on. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So was this a slithery snake talking to Eve? What was it? I ain't got all night to play with you damn brother. Go to 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. What the hell is this? Tell like I said, it's a ship spirited. Bruh, no, bruh, y'all supposed to know this like the back. Bruh, the hell? Read what you got. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. Uh-huh. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's your precept for Genesis 3. That serpent was an angel of light that appeared to Eve. All right, that's why he was so enticing unto her. Go back. Genesis 3 verse 1. Book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 1. Come on. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, mm -hmm. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. How did she know this? From Adam. Right? The breath of life was breathed into Adam. Adam was taught the commandments. Adam taught his wife the commandments. So she knew better. Go ahead. And the serpent said unto the woman, uh -huh. Ye shall not surely die. You ain't gonna die if you eat of that tree. You ain't gonna die, girl. Go ahead. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, mm -hmm. then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hmm. So remember we read in James 1, nobody is enticed except by their own lust. So Satan knew it was something in her that had a lust or a desire for power to have dominion. Because when God created her, he said that she shall be a help meet for Adam in whom he made Adam above every living creature in the earth. He didn't put Eve on his level. He said she's going to be a help meat for him but eve had some type of desire in her like uh, isn't there more to life than just helping the god you understand so satan was like yeah there is more to life than that all you gotta do is eat of the tree and you gonna be a guy you gonna be on that same level now watch this go ahead and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. That's how you know it ain't talking about no damn apple. You understand? This is a doctrine. Desire to make one wise. You're learning. You understand? Read on. She took of the fruit thereof uh -huh. and did eat uh -huh. and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Now... The Bible, like he told Moses some things you shall declare, some things you shall hide, right? And in Maccabees, he talked about how the Bible is abridged, is very abbreviated. You understand? So you got to imagine what really took place here. <laughs> All right? Now watch this. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. Paul going to drop a nugget for us concerning what took place here read that the book of first timothy chapter 2 and verse 12 Go ahead. but i suffer not a woman to teach uh -huh. nor to usurp authority over the man so you gotta why is paul saying this first and foremost you're writing to timothy who was over ephesus when you read acts 19 what was prominent in F ephesus feminism the worship of the goddess diana right so he's telling Timothy, you got to make sure you enforce this in your congregation for sure. Don't let them women, listen, tell them learn in silence. <laughs> Neither to do what? Usurp. Neither. Nor to Nor. usurp authority over the man. Nor to usurp authority over the man. But to be in what? But to be in silence. And Paul going to go way back to understand the, the depths of why this has to be enforced in the church. Go ahead. For Adam was first formed, uh -huh. then Eve. Adam was first formed, 
Then Eve, think about it. Adam was not made. All of us came out of the womb of a woman. Adam did not come out of the womb of a woman. Adam was God only begotten son. The hell is this? He was the work of workmanship of God hands. You understand? He was first formed. Then Eve. Go ahead. And Adam was not deceived. Adam didn't fall for the serpent. Couldn't step to Adam and trick Adam. Adam wasn't deceived. Adam didn't fall for that doctrine. Go ahead. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So the woman was the one deceived. So how did Adam end up? How did she give the fruit to him and he ate of it? What happened there? Go back to Genesis chapter 3. Reverse 13. Book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 13. Go ahead. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? So what have you done, woman? Go ahead. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So she was deceived. She was tricked by the serpent. You understand? She fell for it. Now read verse 11. Verse 11. Uh Uh-huh. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Talk, now you're talking to Adam. Go ahead. Has thou eaten of the tree? Wherefore I commanded thee that thou shouldest, shouldest not eat. Come on. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree. And I did eat. So I want y'all to notice something, right? And this is, Paul had the wisdom to make it plain. The woman blamed it on the serpent. The serpent beguiled me. Adam didn't place no blame on the serpent because the serpent didn't trick him. He didn't fall for that. He said it was that woman, that woman you gave me, Lord. It was the woman. The woman was a chink in his armor. She was able to penetrate a weakness within him, just like the serpent was able to penetrate a weakness within her. You understand? Adam said it was that woman you gave me. So watch this. Go to Proverbs. No, read verse 17 first. Read 17. Verse 17. So the Lord going to express what was the fault of Adam. Right? Watch this. And unto Adam he said, uh-huh. because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. So the Lord making it plain. This is, this is why I'm judging you. This is why you got to die now. Because you hearkened to the voice of your wife. Mm-mm-mm. That's where it starts. That's where it starts right there. The fall of man. Because he hearkened to the voice of his wife. Now watch this. Go to Proverbs 7 and 21. Because in verse 6, it just says she ate of the fruit and gave unto her husband and he did eat. Then the Lord said, because you hearkened to the voice of his wife. So what really, what's really going on here? Proverbs 7 and 21. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7 and verse 21. Come on. With her much fair speech. With her what? Much fair speech. With her much fair speech. She caused him to yield. Uh Uh-huh. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. She what? She forced him. She what? She forced him. She forced him. She forced him with the flattery of her tongue, the flattery of her lips. Now read 25 real quick. Verse 25. Go ahead. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Uh Uh-huh. Go not astray in her paths. Go ahead. For she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men. Many what? Strong men. Many strong men. Strong men. Who are we reading about right now? Adam. God's only begotten son had dominion over the whole earth. Was led in a paradise. But through the flattering of lips, he felt, I'm telling you, you brothers, you brothers got to be mindful. The things written for a time was written for your learning. A lot of you brothers, and I'm telling you, I'm, listen, all of our women, check, check, all of our women are susceptible to these activities. It don't matter how long they've been in the truth. How many classes they attended? How many YDO sessions they didn't had? Women's sisters they hosted, women's circle they hosted, whatever. They will always attempt this. You understand? They will try to get you to stay home from from camp. Try to get you to to stay home from 
fellowshipping with the brothers, going over scriptures. You understand? What about me? Come spend time with me. They're going to always do this. You understand? This is what happened to Adam. It said Adam was not deceived. Right? The serpent with the Eve, it was a little resistance at first. You don't think it, Adam didn't show her no resistance when she first came to him? But it was the, the flattering of the lips. Right? She forced him. And he fell. You understand? And he hearkened to that voice. Go back to Genesis 3.17. Come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, and verse 17. Uh -huh. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Uh -huh. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. All right, all right. Now, we read down in verse 19, it tell you, you was made out of dust, to dust you shall return. So death was appointed in him because he hearkened to the voice of his wife and then ate of the tree. It ain't talking about no damn apple. Get wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 12. He listened to his wife and partook in this. Read what you got. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 12. Come on. For the deceiving of idols. No, read For it the devising of idols. So the devising or the invention of idols. Go ahead. Was the beginning of spiritual fornication. It was the beginning of spiritual fornication. So what is, what is Solomon dropping on us right here? He letting us know what the fruit of the tree was. It was no damn fruit. It was an idol. It was idolatry. That was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Go ahead. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. The invention of idols was the corruption of life. Now, let's see what all comes with idolatry. Jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. Watch this. For whence thou slay their children in sacrifice. Come on. For whence thou slay their children in sacrifices. For a whilest, they slew their children in sacrifices. What is that called today, brothers? Abortion. Who gets abortions, men or women? Women. women. Go ahead. Or used secret ceremonies uh -huh. or made revelings of strange rites. Come on. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So it's a, it's a lot of spirits, a lot of demons that come with idolatry, right? Now, idolatry was introduced by Satan to the woman, and the woman brought it to Adam. And with the flattery of her lips, she forced him. You understand? So, <sighs> we're reading about the different effects or the different sins, the different evil spirits that come along with the submission to idols, right? So it says they neither they kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled, right? Hmm. Keep reading. But either one slew another treacherously uh -huh. or grieved him by adultery. Come on. So that there reigned in all men without exception blood, mm -hmm. manslaughter, theft, and dissimulation. Corruption, unfaithfulness, what? Unfaithfulness, unfaithfulness. Go ahead. Tumult, mm -hmm. perjury, mm. disquieting of men. No, read it again. Disquieting of what? Of good men. Of good men. You be a good man. You understand, and you'll become disquieted. Go ahead. Forgetfulness of good turns. Read. Defiling of souls. Mm -hmm. Changing of kind. We gonna talk about that too. Changing of kind. Go ahead. Disorder in marriages. Disorder in marriages. Adultery. Wait a minute. Disorder in marriages. Disorder in marriages. Hmm. Disorder in marriage. What is the order that God gave us for marriage? What's the order? Who know? Uh, it's soldier like. What's the order that God gave us in marriage? God, Christ, man, woman. Right. God, Christ, man, woman. What scripture is that? 
First Corinthians 11 and 3. Can we read that real quick? First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. The book so of first, this is the order of marriage by God. Read. The book of First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Paul said, I would have you know that the head of the woman is the man. Just in case some, somebody come along trying to deceive you. The head of the woman is the man. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. So that's the order by God. But God said in the last days when the world is consumed by idolatry, there will be disorder in marriages. Now think about what we just read, brothers, and think about Genesis, the beginning. If the woman is equal to the man or above him, who is the head of that? That's the only thing. God said, I'm the, I'm the head of Christ, and Christ is the head of the man, and the man is the head of the woman. So if the woman is equal to or above her husband, Christ cannot be her head. Who is her head? The damn devil. The damn, the, damn the devil. Right? Now watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14. All of this started with the serpent and the God. You understand? Read that. Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. Disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, mm -hmm. defiling of souls, changing of kind, mm -hmm. disorder in marriages, mm -hmm. adultery, mm. and shameless uncleanness. Shameless uncleanness. No shame. Mm -hmm. I want to hold it. I want to hold it. Keep reading. Keep reading. <laughs> For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning is the what the beginning mm. the cause and the end of all evil again sealing right the fact that that was idolatry in the beginning that eve fell for and brought it to her husband and it flattered him to partake in it right hmm now get get revelation 14 verse 1 revelation chapter 14 verse 1 all right, so you got the first Adam, and then you got the last Adam, all right, which is Christ. Now read that. The book of Revelations, chapter 14, and verse 1. Go ahead. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. Who is that? Christ. Go ahead. And with him, a hundred forty and four thousand, mm. having his father's name written in their foreheads. So this is Revelation 7. Right, 144,000, 12,000 out of each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. Read verse 4. Verse 4. Uh-huh. These are they which were not defiled with women. Read again. These are they which were not defiled with women. So these 144,000 are brothers that are not defiled with women. So, yes, that's going into doctrines. It's going into idolatry. But it's also going into literal women. These men that's going to reign with Christ are not going to be defiled with women. Hold that. Get Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 verse 3. Remember we read earlier, Christ said, don't let no man take your crown. All right. Read what you got. Book of Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 3. Go ahead. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy way to that which destroyeth kings. Read it again. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Who is giving this counsel? No. His mama. A woman is telling him this. This ain't no damn women bashing. We hate women and the other women. We... His mama. This is a woman telling you, telling him this. Don't give your soul to a woman. Same thing Sirach said. Or your ways to that which destroy of kings. Women have the ability to destroy kings. That's why I go back to Revelation 14. Revelation 14 verse 4. Book of Revelations chapter 14 and verse 4. Go ahead. These are they which were not defiled with women. So the brothers that's going to reign with Christ, they're not going to be defiled with women. You understand? They're not going to give their ways to that which destroy of kings. 
They not going to fall for it. They ain't going to go. Read. For they are virgins. Uh -huh. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Mm -hmm. These were redeemed from among men. From among who? From among men. That's how you know this is talking about men. Right? Go ahead. Being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. Now watch this. Let's get the first clip. This is an example of being defiled with women. The brothers that's going to reign with Christ... They're not gonna be like this. This is why we don't play. The, we don't. We don't play. All right. In I U I C. Put that on the screen. Come on. Then I gave him a hall pass. But here's the reason why I did. Start that. it over. It's because I didn't want to take the responsibility. Because I don't think that was from the very beginning. Oh, okay. Then I gave him a hall pass. But here's the reason why I did that is because I didn't want to take the responsibility of getting rid of all demons that I opened up my marriage to. And usually this is what people do when they cheat. They want their of their spouse to cheat on them back. So it would give them a reason to feel better in some way. But let me tell you, that's the wrong way to do it. It's the wrong way to go about it because at the end of the day, you make matters worse. And even though I knew that that option was put forth in front of me, I knew that wasn't the right choice. Yeah. That's not the way that we try to rebuild a marriage. If you want to stay in a marriage that's still on a downfall mm -hmm. and just ride it out downhill, that's up to you if you want to make that choice. But I was not about to make that same choice if I know I also have another option of getting back in the face of God, praying for my marriage, praying for my wife, Ooh. and trying to do the things and correct the wrongs that we had that led us into that position. You had an option to leave before you cheated, but you chose to be selfish. He's better than me, because <laughs> I'm gonna need my ring back since it doesn't mean anything to you. Mm. Pack it to go luggage since you don't like what you have at home. Right. Keep your hall pass. I'm not gonna help you clear your conscience. Right. After what I the hell? Now husband, I did, listen. So he said, instead of taking the hall pass to cheat, he went to God to start praying for his marriage. Was God hearing them prayers, brothers? Now, this this the trip part about the woman, right? So she cheated, right? Then after she cheated, she came to the man. Think about this, y'all. Think about the beginning, right? Eve committed spiritual fornication. She went in took part in the idolatry, right? Then she brought it to her husband. This hoe went and laid down with another man. And the story is, according to her, she called her husband and confessed as soon as she was done, meaning she still had the cream on the side of her mouth. You understand? She still had the man DNA on her and in her. The sweat, all of that. And she called and confessed to her man what she just did. That's the story. And her solution, now, she's a Christian woman. She's a godly woman, right? Her solution was, hey, you can go and cheat now. Do y'all understand? Now watch this. Go to Matthew 19, verse 9. So there's a misconception, and we're going to get into it. There's a misconception that in Jesus Christ, right, you are to be tenderhearted and forgive, meaning in Jesus, you are supposed to forgive your wife and stay married to her if she cheat, all right, because you took the vows, Let's see what Jesus said. Matthew 19, verse 9. Book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 9. Go ahead. And I say unto you, whosoever put a, shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. Okay, okay. So, Christ is saying that you can't put away your wife. All right. When you when you take them vows, and you marry your wife. Do not put your wife away, except <laughs> it be for fornication. So what is Christ 
What is Christ saying? It's one thing that's absolutely unacceptable. You understand? If she tripping, she talking back or whatever, she dealing with, you know, a, a, a argumentative spirit, a slothful spirit and all of that, because under the old covenant, Moses, for the hardest of their hearts, he suffered them to do that. If she ain't pleasing you 100%, you can let her go, right? But Christ said, no, 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 hell no. Nah. All right? Y'all got to overcome that, except it be for fornication. Because if she lay down with another man, it's a spiritual thing. Her spirit is defiled. Now watch this. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 24. Let's start at verse 1. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 1. Uh -huh. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he had found some uncleanness in her. So this is what Christ just said. You can no longer do this, right? Because if you found any manner of uncleanness in her, something that you just wasn't fooling with, what could you do? Read on. Then yeah. let him write her a bill of divorce uh -huh. and give it to her, give it in her hand and send her out of his house. So this is not for fornication. This is because she doing stuff the brother don't like. You can let her go, write a bill of divorcement. Well, watch this. Continue to read. And when she is departed out of his house, uh -huh. she may go and be another man's wife. So since you've written that bill of divorcement, it's official. Now she can go and be another man's wife. Watch this. And if the latter husband hate her. So if the next husband hate her, read. And write her a bill of divorcement. And, she let her, and he let her go. Go ahead. And give it, give it, it in her hand. And sendeth her out of his house, mm -hmm. or if the latter husband die. So if the next husband either divorce her or die, go ahead. Which took her to be his wife, uh -huh. her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. Stop. So if you was married to a woman under the old covenant, right? And you sent her away because. She was doing stuff you didn't like. And she became married to another man. If she became married to another man, what did they do, brothers? They had sex. So Moses is giving a law. Like, look, if you put your wife away, she become married to another man, and something happens to where she's loosed from him, you cannot take her back. The first husband, you can't take her back. Why? Read on. After that, she is defiled. After that, she is what? Defiled. So, now mind you, she didn't cheat on anybody. She was given a bill of divorcement, which was grounds for her to leave and go be married to another man. Meaning, consummation, all that, she has sex with another man. The first husband cannot take her back because now she is defiled. Do y'all understand? Now, keep reading. For that is abomination before the Lord. That is what? Abomination before the Lord. That is abomination. When you take a woman back, that is defiled, meaning she has sex with another man. That is an abomination to the Lord. Read on. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin. Thou shalt not cause the what? The land to sin. To sin. So this is not a carnal. This thing is spiritual. When you do that, you cause the land to sin. The land becomes polluted. Go ahead. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Now go watch this. Go to chapter twenty-two and verse twenty-two. Because some people it gets simple, right? This is why Christ said, "Accept it be for fornication." Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 22. Uh -huh. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, uh -huh. then they shall both of them die. Read. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. So now, under the old covenant, if your wife cheated on you, what happened to her? She got put to death, right? So, in Deuteronomy chapter 24, that's why it's saying 
that you divorced her and she went and became another man's wife. Because there would be no position in which she would be able to be taken back if she cheated. You understand? But her, even you gave her the bill of divorcement, but when she went and laid with another man, she was disqualified from you being able to take her back because she has been defiled with another man's spirit. You understand that? Okay. So go back to Matthew chapter 19. Well, go back to uh, Deuteronomy 24 real quick. Read verse 4 again so we can understand. Read. Read. Book of Deuteronomy. Remember, chapter Christ said, I come not to destroy the law. Right? Read it again. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24 and verse 4. Uh huh. Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled. So, we understand that in Christ, if a sister commit adultery, nobody can put her to death. She can do what, brothers? She can repent. She can give forgiveness from the Lord. Right? Right? Okay. So go back to Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. Book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 9. Come on. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife. So whosoever puts away his wife, divorces his wife, read. Except it be for fornication. So what is Christ teaching us that we are to put our wives away for? fornication because in christ you can't put her to death right but what you can do to not cause the land to sin is to do what put her away because now she is what brothers she is defiled she is defiled right and remember we read in revelation 14 about the brothers who are gonna reign with christ they are not defiled with women you understand now, go to the next clip. This is the same woman, and her whole ministry, her whole YouTube, her claim to fame is cheating on her damn husband. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. Play the, play the next clip. Watch this. It was a woman on my podcast named Raven Hartwell. Shout out to her. She cheated on her husband. Stop! Stop. <laughs> Remember what I said earlier, bro. Simps make this evil world go around. Just the first sentence out of woman on my podcast. She cheated on her husband. Shout out to her. What? What the hell you mean? Shout out to her. What the hell is this? You can't. You can't make this up. The woman cheated on her husband. Shout out to her. What? Man. Hmm. Play it again from the top, from the beginning. <laughs> there was a woman on my podcast named Raven Hartwell. Shout out to her. She cheated on her husband. <laughs> and moments later, I'm talking about moments, within the hour, called her husband and said, I just cheated on you. Boom! So Boom! Right there! Why is he saying that like it's honorable? Why is he saying that like it was within the hour? What does that mean, brothers? She still had the other nigga come on her mouth, on her area, all of that. Come on now, y'all. She was... Damn. She was like a cinnamon bun, bro. She still had the icing all on her. She called her her. The brother said it like that's an honorable thing. You know what I'm saying? Look, think about it, right? If your wife, I ain't gonna say that. It in my mind, at least had a decency to, to clean yourself up. Don't call me with the with. The, uh. What club was that at? <laughs> <laughs> Admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they. I've called her. She hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu Nation. I'm like, what the hell is this?
I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Didn't have to class. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. Watch this. Well, go back to the clip. Go back to the clip. <laughs> mm, I didn't yeah. like that. Why, I didn't like that. Why, why you like that she did it? What did you not like about that? I didn't like that he took it back. <laughs> 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 that hurt my feelings. It always just hurt my feelings. Why should he take cheeks. it back? <sighs> but like you got cheated on. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't know. Did, I, that's what I, I genuinely Would you want a woman to take you back? I would. I would. But you see what I'm saying? We we want grace. I won't cheat. I ain't cheat. I don't even be in that situation. I ain't gonna cheat when I'm married. Right. <laughs> I will never cheat. <laughs> the reality is the same grace we want extended to us is the same grace we should give. And that is so wait, so wait, 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 wait. Damn. Listen, when we was in Christianity, brothers, we thought like that. For real. We was moving like that, all right? Now, idolatry came into the world, and man took part in it by way of who? So I want y'all to, to notice the energy, because this that's a Christian man, and he's saying that out of a Christian heart, meaning by way of Christian doctrine, right? And I want y'all to go back a few seconds. I want y'all to see the energy that she exerts from that man coming to her defense. Read, play it again, play it. it. To us is the same grace we should give. And that is so, so true. There isn't enough grace when it comes to people in general, but we want grace extended to us. And especially in marriage, be mindful. When you get married, you are committing to showing grace to your spouse for better and for worse. And until death do you part. I love this interview. It is so approved by me. I <laughs> love you, Latarius. Love the interview. And as much as I'm not liked, I still support this video. You guys should definitely go watch it. It is a treat. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Now go to we go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 21. I want y'all to think about it, right? Think about it. Read that. Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. What is it talking about, brothers? What was an occasion to deceive the world? Huh? Idolatry, right? Watch this. Read verse uh, 17. Verse 17. Uh -huh. Whom men could not honor in presence. Because they dwelt far off. Mm -hmm. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored. Right. So they made an image of a king. Right. Prophetically, this is going into who? Cesare Borgia. Right. Now watch this. Read verse 21. Verse 21. Uh-huh. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. This was an occasion to deceive the world. What has the world deceived today, brothers? Christianity, right? Read on. For men serving either calamity or tyranny uh -huh. did ascribe unto stones and stocks the incommutable name. Right, like the cross represents who in the world? Christ. So they subscribe his name unto that wood, that stock. Go ahead. Moreover, this was not enough for them, that they erred in the knowledge of God. Jump down to 24. Verse 24. Uh -huh. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. So what comes along with this false doctrine, Christianity? The spirit of adultery. Marriage is no longer being undefiled. Y'all see that, right? So, re when we read this, read verse 27. Verse 27. Uh-huh. For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, 
the cause and the end of all evil. So this precept reveals that the fruit in the garden was what? Idolatry, which was received by who? The woman. And the woman brought it to the man. Why do she love? Oh, I love this clip. Why do why is she so in love with it? Because according to Christian doctrine that he's spewing, she is justified. You understand? Go to Proverbs 30 and 20. And this is proof that God is not with that. It's by way of idolatry that marriages can be undefiled. You understand? In God's law, Christ said, look, stay with your wife except to be for fornication. Then I got to go. You understand? In the name of Jesus. That's what it is. That's God's law. But under Christianity, that's it's the complete opposite. Now watch this. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 20. Go ahead. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. So this is the way of an adulterous woman, a woman that would cheat on you. Go ahead. She eateth. She what? Eateth. She what? Eateth. She eateth. Is it talking about chicken? No. It's talking about another type of meat on another type of bone. She eateth. Go ahead. And wipeth her mouth. And do what? Wipeth her mouth. The, the the sister, the, her story is that she called her husband right after she did it. So she literally ate, wiped her mouth, go ahead, and said, I have done no wickedness. So she didn't go to her husband and say, you know, I cheated, I'm wrong, I don't deserve you, you bought me this ring, so on and so forth. She tried to give him a hall pass. Here, come eat of the fruit. Do what I did so th that way I won't be guilty. That way I won't feel like I done something wrong. But the Christianity come in the picture, and it's like, no, you're not wrong at all. He's wrong if he divorces you because he needs to extend the same grace. You understand? You can't make this up. In the name of white Jesus, an adulterous woman can do no wrong. She can eat, wipe her mouth, and say she's done no wickedness. You understand? So we come into this truth, right? And we understand the truth about Christ, the truth about God, what the law is really talking about. And you still got women that are eat and wipe their mouth and have that same thought process. So the man, the brother, I guess this is story time now, right? All right, story time. So a brother in the truth, right? He finds out that his wife, actually, they was riding in the car together, okay? And he notices his wife texting somebody but why they ride? So he's like, what the hell? Let me see what you got going on. And she wasn't going for it. She would not allow him to see what she was doing, right? So he pulled over. He stopped the car. They basically wrestle over the device. He finally gets a hold of the device, and he sees a man's penis. He sees naked pictures of his wife, so on and so forth, right? All right. So what is she at that point, brothers? What did he discover? She is what? She's the foul, right? Okay, cool. All right. Now, he ain't, he ain't his truth, so he already know how it go. Like Christ said, except to be fornication. Brother, she got to go, right? All right. Now, three days later, he in the house. She in the house. She's supposed to be getting her stuff because he's a mighty man of God and he's getting rid of her, right? Okay. Now, she says, well, I didn't physically do anything. All it was was naked pictures. You understand? All I did was store another man's penis in my phone. It wasn't like I actually did anything to it. All I did was show him what belongs to you and you only, only for your eyes to see. That's all that happened. 
right? He like, no, 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 no. She like, hmm. She get a little closer. I didn't really do anything. He like, no, 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 no. He's standing there, right? She get a little closer. Now she put his hand on his pants. She like, we are still married. I didn't do anything. She drops down on her knees. That just might be a little too explicit. But in her mind, she didn't do no wickedness. You understand? And the brother, three days later, three days after he see that he discovered this, he ends up t- t- turning it up, right? After that, she is what? The foul. Hmm. Now watch this. First Corinthians six and verse fifteen. First Corinthians chapter six and verse fifteen. Mind you, this woman, remember, they was in the truth. What happened to this woman when this this was discovered? She got what? She got put out the body, right? Now read that. Book of First Corinthians, chapter six and verse fifteen. Uh huh. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. So your body is a member of Christ. We came out of Christ's body. You understand? You understand? Okay. Hmm, go ahead. Shall I then take the members of Christ? Shall you take the members of Christ, meaning your body, go ahead, and make them the members of an harlot? And make them the members of a harlot? A defiled woman? Go ahead. God forbid. God forbid. Hell no. Read. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot. When you join to a harlot, a defiled woman. Read. Is one body. Is what? One body. Is what? One body. Read. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Hmm. So, brothers, if a man takes his wife back after she is defiled, and he lies with her, what has he become? So if her judgment was to be put out, what's his judgment? They want, they want, they did the same thing, the same boat, right? Okay, so the brother do this, right? Hmm. So the conscience is not convicting him enough to realize that I'm supposed to bear her judgment, right? So he continues to come to the school. Yes, oh, most like great blessing, stand strong in the spirit, right? And this go on for months, for months, literally. And we know what the scriptures say: there's nothing here that won't be made manifested, right? So eventually, it come out, he get exposed, or whatever the case. But this is the trip part about it. Um, a, a senior man. I'm just saying, Bishop, a bishop, asked him. He said, wow, so over the course of these months, did you feel like you was worthy to come to the Sabbath? And the brother said, yes. Now think about it, right? What is the way of an adulterous woman? They will eat, wipe their mouth, and say they have done no wickedness. Paul just said the two shall become one flesh, right? This thing is spiritual. He said, after he did that, which caused something that causes the land to sin, he said that he still felt worthy to come to the Sabbath and sit behind a leadership table. What spirit did he take on? That the foul spirit, I have ate and done no wickedness. You understand? That's why them spirits, they got to go. That's why Christ said, these are they which are not defiled with women. He was defiled with a damn doctrine. In his mind, he could lay with her, and she still spent a night over his house, all that. He could do all that and still be worthy to lead a congregation. That's Christianity. You understand? He turned completely against God, the word of God. Do y'all understand that? So, bro, we're not playing that sim shit because the Lord don't play that. <laughs> For real. 
That brother, when you do that, brothers, you literally become defiled. Your spirit becomes defiled. You don't read the Bible. Your understanding is not the same anymore. You understand? Now watch this. <sighs> was that was that the second clip? All right, go to Revelation two. Revelation chapter two, verse twenty. Book of Revelations, chapter 2 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. So remember we read earlier in 1 Timothy 2, Paul said, I suffer not a woman to teach, right? So the church in Thyatira had this spirit where the woman had a voice, excuse me, in the congregation. Go ahead. Teach. To teach. And to seduce my servants to commit fornication. So, brothers, what I want y'all to see, when there's disorder in terms of what God said, God, Christ, man, woman, when it's disorder and a woman is made equal to or above the man, who becomes her head? So what is she going to teach? She's going to teach that doctrine. She's going to teach just like we just saw. You got to extend the same grace. That Christ, for Christ forgave you, right? You have to forgive me, even though I, you understand. So with that doctrine, remember what I just said. The brother felt that he was worthy, meaning in his mind, basically, he going against what we teach and what the Bible say. Because he was seduced. He believed in his mind what she was saying. She had a point. I don't agree with that. I don't agree that I should have to put you away just because you revealed yourself to another man and he, uh, you storing and looking at his penis and lusting after it. That's not, uh, nah, 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 you steal my baby. The hell is this? When you follow, when you follow that, it wasn't just the physical act, brothers. You understand? She can't, after she did the act, she came with the Christian doctrine. We still married. You have to forgive me. You understand? I know what they teaching you. I know they stood me up and did all of that and put me out. But me and you know, our God, say that we still married. And the brother ate of that fruit. You understand? This is what happened when women get out of their natural God-given role. You understand? And think about the Jezebel spirit, right? How did Jezebel have power in the Old Testament? How did she have power? All right, go. come on. She had she she got power because Ahab was a simp and allowed her to take his power. And what was Ahab? He was a king. He was a what? A king. A what? A king. A king. So did Jezebel really have any power? No, sir. No, the simp ass Negro gave her power. I want y'all to think about it, right? Just think about it. Now, this woman was not Ella May. You understand? She wasn't, uh, what's some more? Uh, somebody give me something. Uh, Beyonce, okay. She, don't say Cardi. She plastic. The hell is this? We're going to say a plastic woman. <laughs> and we just say, Ella, the sister wasn't Ella May. You understand? You got to think about it, right? A woman had a nerve to send naked pictures back and forth, give and receive, and spend a week without you knowing in the same location as this man, right? Okay. She's not Ella May. The, the woman is obese. Six kids. You understand? Hmm. She, do, did she, think about like if you met an obese woman with six kids, right? Is she going to is it anything, basically, 
does she have any type of power without, you understand? So what she desired and what she was able to do was bring him under subjection. You understand? Think about it. He is a mighty man in the truth. He's still young. He's still in his prime. He know the scriptures. You understand? And now he's free. He gonna get he got access to the top most beautiful righteous women in the body. You understand? How can an obese woman with six kids bring you to subjection? You understand? This is crazy. This is crazy. But read it again, verse 20. Verse 20. Uh -huh. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, mm -hmm. because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. So what I want y'all to see is, is that it's not just a, a physical thing, brothers. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual thing. Adam was not deceived. You understand? He didn't believe that God was hiding something from them or whatever, but he was willing to transgress his first love for that woman. You understand? That is the root of the brother giving in to this obese mother of six. It's not, she's not LMA. She's not, damn, you understand? She's not physically desirable. But when you when you have a wicked mind and you really don't believe in what the Bible is telling you to do, stand strong, be a man, you ain't you ain't supposed to go for that. The woman gonna sense that and she gonna exploit that. And that's what was going on in the church of Thyatira. All right? To seduce my servants to commit fornication. Jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. Come on. And I will kill her children with death. <laughs> and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth search the rings of the heart. So what's the destiny for anybody who follow that Jezebel spirit? Death. death. Go ahead. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Uh-huh. But unto you I say. Think about it. Why did the Lord appoint death in Adam? Why did, why did the Lord tell him he appointed death in him? Because what? Because thou hearkenest to the voice of your wife. So he said, he will give every one of you according to your works. So if you hearken to that feminist doctrine, like we just saw, like we just witnessed, is in Christianity, extend the same grace looking at he going to give you according to your works. Adam fell from paradise. You understand? And had to die. That's going to, you brothers, you have your crown already on your head. For you to be called into this truth and receive this understanding, your name is in the book of life. You the only one that can blot it out. You understand? And that's what happened to Adam. Adam was led into paradise. Adam was made to be immortal. But because he hearkened to the voice of his wife, he lost his inheritance. You brothers, Christ said he's going to give unto you according to your works. You got these examples in the scriptures and you're not taking heed to them and you do the same thing. Okay, this is what you're asking for. You understand? Keep reading. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, mm -hmm. as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan. So this doctrine is going into what? Right, feminism. The woman can teach. The woman is neither male nor female in Christ Jesus looking at. It. That's the doctrine. The woman can usurp authority over the man. That's the doctrine. He said, as many has not known, as many as have not this doctrine, meaning you don't believe, 
and have not known the depths of Satan. The depths of Satan. What is the depths of Satan talking about? What is the topic of this whole thing that he's going over with the church of Thyatira? Huh? Say it on the mic. Brother scared. Brother t- I don't want her to hear me say this. Looking at <laughs> Bro, what is going on here? That's women empowerment, Cap. What? Women empowerment. Women empowerment. Yes, sir. What empowers women? The man. What type of man? A simp. A simp. So what is the destiny of simps? Death. What? Death. What? They going to die. They going to die. They got to die. Now watch this. Go to Ezekiel 24. So, all right. Now, can a simp repent, brothers? Yes. <laughs> I thought I could have I'll get it twisted. All right? Don't get it twisted. I'm not condemning you, my brother. But just know, for you to do that, it was something deeply wrong with you. Deeply. That's why I say the depths of Satan. Something deeply wrong with you for you to fall for that. And now go to Sirach chapter 33. Sirach chapter 33, verse 18. Come on. The book of Sirach chapter 33 and verse 18. Come on. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, Mm -hmm. and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. You kings. Go ahead. Give not thy son. Brothers of y'all kings. Y'all know what he is. Brothers, is y'all kings? Mm, you notice right here, I ain't saying that. Simp, simp, simp. <laughs> Read on. Give not thy son and wife. And thy, what? And wife. Read. Thy brother and friend power over thee while thy living. Yes, brothers, that's in the Bible. Do not give your wife power over you while you live. That's the say of the Lord. Read on. And give not thy goods to another, uh-huh. lest it repent thee, Come on. and thy entreat for the same again. Read. As long as thou livest and has breath in thee, give not thyself over to any. Come on. For better it is that thy children should seek to thee, than thou shouldest stand to the, their courtesy. Come on. In all thy works keep thy, thyself the preeminence. In all thy works keep to thyself the preeminence. Because their preeminence was given unto you by God. He said the head of the woman is who? The man. The Lord said keep their preeminence. Read on. Leave not a stain in thine honor. Because if you don't keep their preeminence, what is going to do to your reputation? It's going to stain it. Like, damn, that brother is simp. That brother fell to a woman? He was supposed to be a leader, a ruler of the congregation? And he couldn't rule his wife. And put that put that on the screen, man. This some of you brothers. This why this why some of y'all brothers ain't here right now. All right. Play that. It was a struggle to get my boyfriend's attention. Video games, sports, the boys. But that all changed once I found out about Cymbalta. Cymbalta is the first and only FDA-approved medicine specially formulated to promote simping. This is how it works. Cymbalta is a once-daily transrectal supplement designed to enlarge the simp region of the brain. Cymbalta saved my relationship. My boyfriend went from ignoring me to simping for me immediately. He no longer wanted to play video games or hang out with the boys. He had the urge to wake up early, go to farmer's markets, and wear cute outfits, just for fun. And the best part is, Cymbalta is 100% safe, so there's nothing to worry about. Cymbalta is extremely dangerous and not forever. So, so she's saying, right, that it's a good thing. Like, this this Cymbalta saved my marriage. He's simping after me, he spends more time with me, so on and so forth, right? And another thing, too. Y'all, okay, your wife, she may not promote you to break God's commandments, right? Maybe there would be some resistance if you came home trying to bug out. Maybe it would. But I guarantee you, for 99% of us in this room, if another 150 days of camp came about, 
and you came home every day and laid in her bosom and t- t- took her out to eat and spent time with her and all that while she had knowledge of this other man putting their life on the line at camp, she would have no resistance to that. She would have no opposition to that whatsoever. She would be completely fine with you devoting all of your time to her instead of to the Lord. 99% of our wives, they wouldn't be like, uh, sir, you're not going to go to camp? No, but I'm going to spend time with you. Okay. What, what movie we watching? What restaurant we going to? They're not going to be like, uh... No, no, you need to go and serve the Lord. Who think they why you gonna do that? Dummy, did you raise your hand? Did you? Did, oh, the hell up! I thought I see your hand raise a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. How's the Dummy? Hmm. How's the Dummy? All right. Hey, don't take this medicine. Uh, how's the Dummy? Play it again from the top. I'm telling y'all, some of these wives then slipped this, they uh, crushed it in the powder and put it in your damn, uh, t- she served you some drink at dinner. They, they, a lot of y'all didn't, she didn't hit y'all with the simpalta, man, for real. It was a struggle to get my boyfriend's attention. After the night, the fact game. that you didn't came to the school and you witnessed this class first, and she reeing up right now. She thought, damn, she in her mind. I didn't have to get no more. I got him. He said, then went to class. He stayed past 10 o'clock. Oh, hell, she reeing up right now. She in the plug right now. Play the, play the video. Come on. Sports. The boys. But that all changed once I found out about Cymbalta. Cymbalta is the first and only FDA-approved medicine specially formulated to promote simping. This is how it works. Cymbalta is a once-daily transrectal supplement designed to enlarge the simp region of the brain. Cymbalta saved my relationship. My boyfriend went from ignoring me to simping for me immediately. Pause. He no longer... Y'all noticed something, right? What a pill gotta go? <laughs> hey. I got another story. Y'all know what's a real dangerous spirit? You know a spirit that I cannot trust? A whoremonger spirit. You know why I can't trust a whore brother that just act like he just can't stop smashing? Because if you put that thing on the, on such a pedestal, you understand? It's, ain't no telling what you will do. Now, I got to watch this. Go to Sarai 23 and 17. I got a story. I got a story to tell. The book of Sirach, chapter 23 and verse 17. Go ahead. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. So all bread is talking about what? All women, right? All races, shapes, sizes, so on and so forth, right? All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Go ahead. He will not leave off till he die. He won't stop. To the Lord, kill him. Some brothers go from bread to brick. Let me explain. So we had a brother amongst us, brother put in work, but he couldn't stop fornicating. Right, you got put out for fornication like multiple times, right? So in between one of them times where he was put out, he chopping it up with a brother. You know what I'm saying? The brother was like, yeah, man, I can't, I don't know if I could deal with a brother confessing to me that he deal with homosexuality. So the brother sent the pastor side, he like, well, bro, I ain't going to lie, bro. I mean, some brothers really be struggling with that. So the brother like, what you mean brothers be struggling with that? You know, surely, you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't not in our camp, right? The brother's like, the brother basically was like, yeah, man, I ain't going to lie. When I was put out first time, uh, y'all know the Katy Perry song? what she say? I kissed the girl and I liked it, right? The brother was like, you know, I thought it was a girl, but it wasn't. And I didn't realize till... He was already 
and I realized that it was a I don't know how I don't know if you reach down or something because you know you might be getting that you might want to reach down and you know what I'm saying to get that prepared for after what's taking place right I'm t- I don't want to be two eggs right I'm sorry I don't know if that was the case he reached down to, to prepare the next event in the event and he wrote whoa that's that's the same thing that I got. But somehow after this revelation, when he realized that that wasn't a she, it was a he, he was ex- he was liking what he was experiencing. So he's like, damn, I know it's a dude now, but this feels good. He going in. So... <laughs> <laughs> so he confessed it to a brother like I found out it was a trendy, I found out it was a guy, but I liked it. You understand? So a whoremonger, somebody especially in this world, like remember what we read in Wisdom of Solomon 14 about changing of kind? I told you I was gonna come back to that. You don't know, especially for the brothers that love right you don't know you could be in a club dancing you know what i'm saying if you was in the world in the club in the in the world this present world you could be in a club dancing right and somebody is bagging that thing up going in but it's dark you know ain't no lights on in a club you not seeing like the crevices in the neck the discern an uh, apple there right so you just they going in in your mind you're like man this she, she she a freak she ready she ready bro so you know what I'm saying you take it to the bathroom and you not considering like damn she walked in the men's bathroom just so easily right like she just belongs here or something but you go you go to the men's bathroom <laughs> just oh so casually you understand. And you get to look, whatever, and now you like, all right, it's time for you to, I'm trying to see what that's about, what I was getting with the clothes on, I'm trying to get it without the clothes. And the pants come down, and some start swinging. It's, you done already, you done already got the first part. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> This will be happening. What y'all think happened to Dwight Howard, bro? You know what I'm saying? It's a rapper named Lil Wop. Uh, he was supposed to be like Gucci Mane Jr. He used to be signed to Gucci Mane. And he said that he liked having sex with trannies. And now pull up the uh, image of the, how the brother look now. Now watch this. The, the yellow hair. Yeah, that one. The, come on, man. Just click the image. Click the image, bruh. So on the right hand side, that was the the whoremonger. On the left hand side was the all bread is sweet. You understand? Which eventually he experienced brick. And he liked the brick more than the bread. And he became he changed his kind. You understand? It go back to what I was saying. When you join yourself to a harlot, you become one flesh. Like the brother, he took on the spirit of that adulteress. And just like how she still felt like she was worthy to be with him after she did what she did, he felt that he was worthy to be amongst us after he did what he did, knowing that he was supposed to bear his judgment after that. Bear the same judgment she got. Same thing. You have sex with a tranny right meaning a man you, that same spirit is going to jump on you enter into you take over you and before you know it you're the tranny you understand for real this happened now I ain't the brother I don't know if he's I don't think that he's in tranny mode yet but he likes that. 
He likes that. He's into bricks now. Not just bread. He's into bricks now. Okay? And he was a, a man amongst us. <laughs> All right? So now go uh, go back to the video, man. We didn't finish the clip. So notice how she just made it all sound good, right? Yeah, this is this helps on my man. It saved my marriage. He does this, he does that. But every commercial about medicine, what do they say real fast at the end? Side effects. Yeah, you might start bleeding out of your asshole and you might get admitted to the hospital for diseases. You say it real quick. You gotta stop, you gotta put it in so you know how YouTube got the little setting where you can speed something down. I mean speed something down. You can slow something down, speed it up. And what you gotta start doing? You gotta hear them side effects in slow motion. Alright? Play it. I wanted to play video games or hang out with the boys. He had the urge to wake up early, go to farmers markets and wear cute outfits just for fun. And the best part is, Cymbalta is 100% safe, so there's nothing to worry about. Cymbalta is extremely dangerous and not for everyone. Side effects include depression, loss of respect, shrinking testicles, loneliness, hallucinations, and in some cases, death. Call your doctor immediately Hold if you on. have a- Y'all ain't listen to the side effects. Y'all looking at her sticking the feel of it. Y'all ain't listen to the side effects. Can you- And wear cute outfits, just for fun. And the best part is, Cymbalta is 100% safe, so there's nothing to worry about. Cymbalta oh. is extremely- So she said Cymbalta is 100% safe. Now the commercial man follows right behind it. Cymbalta is extremely dangerous. <laughs> Do y'all understand? I'm telling you, with the flattering of the lips, she forced you. Adam lost paradise, bruh. Eternal life. All right, Simpalta is extremely dangerous. Let's see how. Play on. Extremely dangerous and not for everyone. Side effects include depression, loss of respect, shrinking testicles, loneliness, hallucinations, and in some cases, death. Whoa, Call your doctor. Oh my God. Loss of respect, shrinking testicles, sometimes even death. I gotta meditate on that thing. For real. That's the side of side effects of being a simp. That's the sorrows of a simp. You get a stain in your honor. Lord just might kill you. You know what I'm saying? Keep reading. Immediately if you have a simp erection lasting more than four hours. Relationships can be complicated. Simplify yours with Simbalta. You know what's funny about women like that? They they enjoy the benefits of a simp, like getting put on a pedestal and you know all all the time and all of that. But they are really not attracted to that. You know what I'm saying? Meaning that same behind every uh simp occupier like a woman that has a simp behind that woman that has a simp man is some dude that's the opposite of a simp in the background laughing like <laughs> that nigga love her so much he just don't know you know what I'm saying I'm telling you them women that be doing that they always have a, a man because they crave testosterone. They have a man full of testosterone while your ass full of estrogen laying up under her. It's a man that's beating the dooney down. For real. I'm telling you. Now watch this. Sirach 25, 25. Book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 25. Go ahead. Give the water no passage. Read. Neither a wicked woman liberty to gather abroad. That's what we read in Esther chapter 1. Hell nah, we let her keep doing her thing as the queen, then that spirit gonna rub off on all the women. You understand? Read. If she go not as thou wouldest, have her cut her off from thy flesh. Read it again. You read it wrong. If she go not as thou wouldest, have her cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. So, is this 
talking about what Christ said we can't do no more? Okay. So do this still apply to us? Who can prove that? What is scripture? First Corinthians seven if the unbelieving in the part. All right, let's read that. First Corinthians, remember it says, give her a bill of the voice and let her go. Let her go, dog. All right. Read that. Seven and fifteen. The book of First Corinthians. Supposed chapter to already be there. What's wrong with this? Book of, guy? Book of First Corinthians, chapter seven and verse fifteen. Uh-huh. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. So what is Paul saying? Let her go. Or let him go. It's that applied to the to the man too. You understand? They not trying to keep these commandments. If they if she not trying to submit as does say of the Lord, after you have exercised by way of counsel a dispensation of grace, an opportunity to get our mind right. For example, we read about Jacob and Rachel, right? If she didn't, when he said, put away the strange guys from among you so I can build this altar to the Lord, if she would have retained, if she would have been like, no, what would have happened to Rachel at that point? He would have cut her off. You understand? So, When you get to that level when your mind is made up and you know you're going to serve the Lord and you cannot have your house divided and she don't want to join fully with the Lord, she don't want to submit to you and submit to God's commandments, then she got to go. She got to go. And the same is sisters that that right now they got a nigga in the world that they laying up with every night right now, <laughs> you understand? Probably he didn't told her to cut it off. She probably was watching for a little bit. You like, man, cut this shit off. And she cut it off. And she think that she well, let me know. All right, where we at? Go back to some, <laughs> go back to, uh go to Ecclesiastes seven to twenty six. Ecclesiastes 7 and 26. So we talking about simps. So you brothers, listen to this. Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 26. And I find it more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. So what is snares and nets, bands? What is that going into? She trying to do what? trying to trap you up. She's trying to keep you in bondage, right? Paul said a brother or sister is not in bondage in such cases. But that's her mindset. She want to keep you. She want to keep power over you. You understand? Especially you brothers. You brothers that come out of the world. You was already married. Y'all was already together. I'm telling you, y'all be the ones that be trying to hide the wind because you is so much invested into your marriage. And just like with the situation I mentioned earlier, when y'all was in the world, she cheated on you. And you knew about it. So you already know how she'll get down. You know what I'm saying? So in the back of her mind, she like, he t- he did it once, he'll do it again. You understand? Well, we got to watch you, brothers. Because some of y'all, brothers, y'all allowed that before the truth. Now, you coming to Christ, you new creature. You know what I'm saying? Then what it is. Right? You can give it a shot. She can be converted. But we got to watch you brothers, man. For real. It's no, in my worldly nigga, wicked Christian mind, I wasn't going for that. I don't give a damn. Love did that. Well, had to take me back in time and show me otherwise. But I wasn't going for that shit in the world. You understand? If it was a DM... I got a true story, but I'm not going to tell it. All right? But read on. Whoso pleases God <laughs> shall escape from if her. If you please God, you're going to escape from them snares and nets. You're not going to remain in bondage from her if you please God. Go ahead. 
But the sinner shall be taken by her. But the what? Sinner shall be taken by her. So, again, this goes back to what happened in the garden. The, uh, the Jezebel spirit in Thyatira. It takes something in you for her to penetrate and manipulate and cause you to remain in her snares and nets. She don't got that much. She don't got no damn power. You got to give it to her. You understand? And what's going to cause you to give her that power? Sin is something in you that's not fully submitted to God. That's why you would allow her not to submit to you. You understand? The sinner or the simp shall be taken by her. You understand? Go to uh, Sirach 26 and 7. It's a couple more scriptures. Sirach 26, verse 7. Book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 7. Come on. An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. An evil wife is a yoke. A yoke. A yoke. What is a yoke, brothers? Bondage. An evil wife is you and them snares and nets. God said, if you please him, you're going to escape from her. Go ahead. He that hath hold of her is as though he held a scorpion. So this is heavy right here, brothers. If you get bit by a scorpion, what happens? What kind of die? It's, you're going to die immediately? That girl is poison. Poison. That's why the scriptures say you will be what? What word do you use? You take that woman back. Start with a D. The foul. Your spirit is the foul. You take on her spirit. You become poisoned. Now you looking at script. You lying to leadership. You doing this and doing it. Like, what, what the hell is wrong with you? You didn't take on the spirit of that harlot that wiped her mouth and said she did no evil. For real. That's why I'm telling you, if you please God, you're going to escape from her. But if you're a simp, you're going to be poisoned. You're going to be defiled. The, what did God say about the men that reign with Christ? These are they which are not defiled with women. Don't let no woman take your crown, brothers. I'm telling you. 1 Timothy 3 and 1. It's the last scripture. <sighs> I'm telling you, bro. Simp will lose his inheritance. He will lose everything he worked so hard for in his truth, his reputation, his, res his respect amongst men, his trust amongst leadership. You understand? Re go, go back to the original definition, of the first Urban Dictionary definition of simp. I just want that first sentence. Simp. It is when a male is overly submissive to a female and gains nothing from it. You will gain nothing, but you will lose everything. You will get nothing out of allowing her to, uh, I mean, that's, I don't know, man. I don't know. that It, it, it got to be something deeper within you. To allow obese mother of six, not Ella May. It's not Ella May. You understand? This is not a dime. Not even a nickel. This ain't even a nickel. It's something terribly wrong with you. You understand? Is something wrong with your spirit? All right, where we at? Read that. Look at First Timothy chapter three and verse one. Come on. This is a true saying: If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Right. A bishop means leader. Go ahead. A bishop then must be blameless. You gotta be blameless. The husband of one wife. Right. A husband of one wife. Read. Vigilant, sober. Of good behavior. Come on. Given to hospitality. Free. Apt to teach. Mm -hmm. Not given to wine. Mm -hmm. Nor striker. Mm -hmm. Not greedy 
a filthy lucre, mm-hmm. but patient, mm-hmm. not a brawler, mm-hmm. not covetous, mm-hmm. one that ruleth well his own house. So that's the criteria of a leader. You got to be able to rule your house. You got to be able to rule your house. What you say, go. You understand? If you tell her to come forth or whatever, she's supposed to come forth. Mm-hmm. If she get out of line and disrespect you, you're supposed to put her ass in check. That's how a leader going to roll. All right, go ahead. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. Uh-huh. For if a man knoweth not how to rule his own house. If you don't know how to rule your own house, meaning if you a simp, go ahead. How shall he take care of the church of God? There's no place for simps in the seats of leadership. That's what God is saying. That's what God is telling us. There is no seat of leadership for a simp in the church of God. All right? So, you know, if the Lord raised you up and you know you're dealing with a damn scorpion, you know, do what you got to do. I mean, you can get counsel, you can fix it, she can be converted, whatever. Maybe you just never did what you were supposed to do in the first place and put her in check. Put her in check, fix it. If she's still what she is, bro, hey, don't be the foul women, bro. The Lord, the Lord gonna, Lord gonna pluck you out. I'm telling you. Like you was supposed to do with her, the Lord going to give you according to your works. All right? You just asking for it. All right. Pluck your ass out. I'm telling you. And you're going to be walking around all sad and distraught. <laughs> talking about what you was. I'm telling you, man. You'll lose your inheritance. What is the nation? <laughs> Nation is men leading by example. 